Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chapter 3, our first video. And here we're going to take a look at the income statement, uh, related information to the income statement, and revenue recognition. Some of this, of course, will be review. And again, let me recommend that you read the chapter after going through my videos. And hopefully that will help you in your uh, retention. Okay, learning objectives. Here, after studying this chapter, you're going to be able to look at the what's in the income statement, a lot of which will be reviewed from your 1A or 101 class. Look at for unusual income items. This will be a little more on top of what you know. And then explain reporting of stockholders' equity, revenue recognition principle. And you will always remember we recognize revenue when it is earned, not when we're paid in advance and it's an unearned revenue, which is a liability. And then we'll look at earnings quality. Okay. Um, what do we want? We want to have information that, that is useful, but it does have some limitations. And uh, we'll take a look at the content as well. Um, here is some uh, information as well, which builds on what you've already learned on discontinued operation and other comprehensive income. Uh, and then we'll take a look at retained earnings, a statement of stockholders' equity, and how it's presented on the balance sheet. And again, we'll review the revenue recognition principle and overview a five-step module model and finally summarize. And we will look at how we manage our earnings. That's very important for CFOs to know. And um, there's also some non-GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles reporting that we'll want to review and take a look at how fraudulent financial reporting can happen and how we've responded to that as an accounting profession. Okay, let's identify the uses, limitations, and basic content of an income statement. And here, we're going to look at the past performance of the company. So it's useful from the standpoint of providing a basis for predicting future performance. And it helps potential investors or outsiders assess the risk or the uncertainty of achieving future cash flows, the key measure in investment decisions. So limitations. Companies omit items they can't measure reliably. So a, a limitation of the income statement. Income numbers are affected by the accounting methods employed. I think by now you would know what, how many, let's say, for example, what your useful life is on your depreciation. That can change the depreciation expense quite dramatically. And then those kinds of things involve good judgment. All right. Elements. Um, Inflows or other enhancements of assets of an entity or settlements of its liabilities during a period from delivering or producing goods, rendering services, or other activities that constitute the entity's ongoing major or central operations. So very simply, it's what we receive for the products we sell or the services we provide. Just that simple. They have various titles here, sales revenue, sales, fees, uh, rent revenue. Um, but we also have interest revenue and sometimes dividends that we have from outside companies where we receive dividends. Okay outflows or other using up of assets or incurrences of liability during the period from delivering or producing goods, rendering services, or carrying out other activities 
that constitute the entity's ongoing major or central operations. And those are going to be the expenses that we incur necessary to provide those revenues. The big one is cost of goods sold uh, that, that we see in <coughs> merchandising companies and manufacturing companies. But there are others, other kinds of expenses, depreciation expense, rent expense, et cetera, et cetera. And so those we will, we will match at the time that we uh, provide, I should say, so report the revenues. All right, gains and losses. Uh, you had a little bit of that in the 1A 101 courses, but here increases in equity from peripheral or incidental transactions of an entity except those that result from revenues or investments by the owners. Um, that's sort of a long-winded academic spiel, but basically what these, these accrue from are selling investments, plant assets, maybe settling liabilities, write-offs of assets due to impairments or casualties. Um, and we'll see, you'll remember, if we sell off our plant asset and, for example, and we receive less money than our um, co um, carrying cost of that asset, then we'll have a loss, just that easy. Or if we sell it for more, we'll have a gain. All right, multiple step income statements. I always like those the best, to be honest. Uh, separates operating transactions from non-operating transactions. So <clears throat> it's going to match our, our expense recognition principle. It's going to match costs and expenses with the revenues that it helped produce. So highlights certain intermediate components of income that analysts are going to use in assessing financial performance. Okay, here is that multi-step income statement. And you can see here that um, um, we have our sales. These, This is going to be our gross sales here, as I call it, sales revenue. And we subtract sales discounts and sales returns and allowances to get our net sales. And from net sales, we subtract our cost of goods sold, and that gives us our gross profit. Then we have our operating expenses. We usually break them down, as is done here, between our selling expenses and our general and administrative expenses. Selling expenses could, in, could include commissions, sales salaries, that kind of thing. General and administrative would be the beautiful accounting staff, uh, HR, uh, IT, those kinds of things. And so we subtract those from gross profit to get in from, to arrive at income from operations. But sometimes we have other revenues and gains. Here, we had some dividend revenue that we got from another company. Not This isn't our dividends, where we have cash dividends that we pay our investors. This is where we've invested in another company and received dividends. And then here is a gain on the sale of some, some equipment that we had. So now those are going to be our other revenues and gains, but we also have some other expenses and losses. And we had some interest on bonds and notes. We had a loss on a flood, not good. And those total $126,060. So that comes down to our income before tax. We subtract our tax, and that is our net income for the year. Net income or profit after tax is just what it sounds like after tax. And then we always show 
gap requires that we show earnings on common shares of stock. So we had a 100,000 outstanding shares, and we divide that into the net income for the year. Okay, very nice. So our selling expenses, they've tabulated here. You can see we have a lot of uh, selling expenses. And for GNA, we have other general and administrative expenses. You can get a little familiar with that on your own. And it totals, just as it's shown here, our um, selling expenses and GNA expenses, 803799 And that's where it is on the income statement. All right. Um, here, we're going to take a look at Cabrera's net sales, and it highlights the regular and hopefully recurring revenue of the company. The gross profit deducts the cost of goods sold from the net sales to determine the gross profit. So that cost of goods sold, you'll remember from your 102 or your 1B course, is con consists of uh, direct material, direct labor, and overhead that goes into the cost of the finished good or merchandise that we, we uh, purchase directly from manufacturers. Okay, so our operating expenses, I think I went through that. Um, and general and administrative, I went through that. And then income from operations, and that shows you what we've earned from our core operations. Um, but um, we have some non-operating income um, that's unrelated to our main line of operations, both revenue and uh, expenses, and gains and losses. And then our income tax, um, and finally net income that focuses on what we kept after all those expenses and revenues. All right, unusual and infrequent gains and losses. The first one is unusual, a high degree of abnormality as they call it here. Um, and it's not, or very normally not, very typical of the company in which it operates. Infrequency, type of transaction that is not reasonably to, reasonably to repeat in the foreseeable future. And so some of these examples are losses from a write down or impairment of receivables, uh, property, plant, and equipment, goodwill, and other intangibles. Um, these are losses that we have on the write downs. We might have some restructuring costs here, um, some gains and losses from the sale or abandonment of property and plant and equipment, and maybe even the effects of a strike. And here's some infrequent gains or losses. Uh, here, we're, I love the term extinguishment or paid off, basically. Uh, paid off some of our debt obligations, and we had a gain or loss on that. And maybe we had a gain or loss on the sale of investment securities. So those kinds of things. And, and lastly, our earnings per share. Um, one thing to watch out on when the earnings per share, you see earnings per share, you would think it would be net income. But we backed out preferred dividends because that's not available to our common stockholders. So this is the net income available to our common stockholders. And then it's the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. So it's a significant business indicator and it measures dollars earned by each share of the common stock and it must be disclosed on the income statement. Okay, that looks like a good place to stop this video. And when we return, we will uh, look at some examples 
of earnings per share. Until then, bye for now.